Hi everybody, Gary from Speaker Medic here today with you. Uh, normally we've done some uh, videos in the past and stuff teaching you a few things about speakers, amplifiers, what have you. And we generally stand behind the camera to do that. Now that you've seen me, you know why. But I only have one camera and I can't exactly do all the fancy shots because I have to hold it in my hand. Today we're going to put a tripod up and we're going to try to sit out in front of you and try to explain a few things, maybe give you some useful information about speakers, maybe tell you some things that you did not know before and hope to make sense out of them. Okay, here's what's going on today. We're going to discuss wattage. All right. For some reason, people have had it in their heads out there that the more wattage you have, the bigger and the better you are. That's not necessarily always true. Most people have absolutely no idea what wattage really means. And what I hope to do today is to, is to give you some concepts of that, make you understand it a little bit, and tell you which numbers are important to you. For example, <clears throat> this happens to me all the time, but on one particular day a customer came in wanting a new speaker or wanting a speaker repaired for the cabinet that he had. It was a powered cabinet, what we call an active cabinet, and he wanted a speaker repaired. Uh, we looked at it and it happened to be a brand called Alto Professional. Now we used to sell Alto Professional, so I know the brand well. And uh, I explained to him, I said, listen, I can rebuild that speaker for you. That's not a problem. The problem is, is that it's not a major manufacturer type speaker like you would call JBL or Community or Yamaha or, you know, any of those major fa uh, manufacturers. What they do is they use a Chinese speaker inside there. So it, it's mass ordered in quantity and then you just put the speaker in. So, since it is a Chinese speaker and no major name involved, I'm not going to have a parts listing for that speaker. Which means I have to disassemble the speaker, measure all the parts out, try to figure out exactly what's in there, what will fit, and then build you a speaker back to those specifications. Even though it may be different, slightly different, from the other speaker on the other side. So you may have one speaker that sounds a little louder or a little quieter than the other, you know, if you're running stereo. However, I told him I can probably replace that speaker actually cheaper than I can rebuild it for you. He was worried about the wattage. Well, what kind of wattage does the speaker have? Is it going to be big enough? Well, there, therein lies the problem. A lot of people will come in here and uh, want to talk wattage with me. They'll want to talk, you know, I have had people try to drop names of speakers that they know thinking maybe it's going to impress me or something. The truth is 90% of the DJs out there have absolutely no idea what wattage means, how it's rated and everything. So I explained to the guy, well, I tell you what, if you can explain to me the three different, basic three different uh, forms of, of wattage, what they mean and how they derive at those numbers, I'll be glad to tell you what the wattage of the speaker is. And of course, the blank look came over his face and he realized that he had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. So let me explain to you. There are three standard forms of determining wattage. Now, this particular customer was concerned that I would have something that would go to a thousand watts because that's what his speaker was rated at, or that's what his amplifier was rated at. And I tried to explain to him, no, it's not a thousand watts. Yes, it is. It says so right on the cabinet. Well, let me tell you, that's for dummies. What they do is that's an advertising ploy, because like I said, there's three different ways of rating wattage. And when they're advertising to you, obviously, the bigger, the fancier the number, the more it's going to impress you, and that's the one you're going to go for. It means absolutely nothing, and I'll tell you why. The three types of ratings are continuous, RMS, and peak. Simple as that. Continuous is done by putting a sound through the speaker, a certain frequency through the speaker, they test at a certain frequency, stably at a certain volume or a certain de decibel level for 24 hours. Let me see if I can give you an idea. For example, this is a tone generator up here. You can't really see it, but I have a test system here that I'll use and I hook speakers up to it and sometimes I'll run an oscillation test through the speaker to see what frequencies it performs at, if there's any noise at certain frequencies. But this guy up here, let me see if we can get her. You don't even hear it at this frequency, but you hear the, the tone now. 
So we may take a tone like this. Okay? And we may take that tone at a certain volume and run that speaker for 24 hours straight. And then measure to see if there's any kind of damage done to the voice coil. The volume that it can handle, the maximum volume that it can handle at that frequency for 24 hours tells us our continuous wattage rating. Okay? Very simple. Now as a DJ, I'm sure you don't play the same signal tone for 24 hours straight. You play music. Okay? Music has loud passages, it has quiet passages. That alludes to the RMS rating. Roots means squared. Now that's way too difficult for me to explain that to you. So in layman's terms, I'm going to tell you another simple term to, to say the best thing, you know, basically the same thing, would be program. Okay? Because when you're a DJ and you've got people on the dance floor, you're playing a program. You've got loud passages, you've got so, uh, quiet passages. So what they do is they play a variety of different volumes and it's basically averaged out over 24 hours to see how much they can do that without any damage to the speaker. Okay? The third way to do that is by peak. And that's the, the listing that you're going to see pretty much on the face of the cabinet when you buy an amplifier or, when they're, or on the face of the amplifier or something like that or on the face of the cabinet when you buy a speaker. They're going to throw that big number at you because it's going to be very impressive that this thing goes to 1,000 watts. What peak means is they can put a sound burst through there. In other words, a loud burst of music for a period of one second. And that's how long your voice coil or how much wattage your, your voice coil can stand for a period of one second on a loud burst like that. Well, I've been in the speaker business and DJ business myself since early 1980s. And so far I've yet to have a one second gig. Generally they're three, four hours, right? So. That peak means absolutely nothing to you. It's not going to do you a damn bit of good. What you're basically interested in is program. So, if you'll notice, you've got to be really careful when picking your speakers. You've got to be really careful when picking your amplifier because they may be rated by both. Um, they generally are rated at so many watts, at so many ohms, you know, and uh, they'll be rated uh, by continuous. RMS or, or program and peak. The signal or the, the number you're actually looking for, the most true number would be your, your program number. Okay. For example, when you do see an, an amplifier out there though and it's rated the three the three wattage ratings, it's probably going to come up to maybe it'll say uh, 350 or 300 watts continuous at, at a four ohm load. Okay, that's when it's the most efficient, basically, is at a 4 ohm load. So I might say 300, 350 watts, 4 ohm. Then it'll generally jump up and it'll show you that it might have 550, 600 watts program. And it may show you a 1,000 watts peak. Okay, so in all actuality, that 1,000 watts that you think you've got in your, in your speaker or in your, in your uh, amplifier is really only maybe four or 500 watts. So... And you generally want to match your speakers to the, to the output of the amplifier. So that's how it goes. It goes continuous, RMS, program, and peak. Okay? So, but let me, gonna, let me tell you here. here. Here's the way, if you want to know about your speakers, here's the way, the most simple way to tell the, the basic wattage handling of your speaker. Now we'll go into different things later. We're going to go into headroom. We're going to go into a lot of different things that, that may not mean anything to you now, but are going to make a lot of sense to you later and help you buy better equipment. And not only that, help you protect your equipment better. Okay, on the desk here, I've got a two-inch voice coil. I think you can see that, okay? I've got a three-inch voice coil. I got a four-inch voice coil, okay? Obviously, there's more wire on this than there is on this, so it has more surface area where it can react to the magnet better and it can also have more surface area so it can cool itself better because that's the way a speaker works actually that's the way it stays cool by moving air over the over the voice coil and it's kind of like a Volkswagen engine these are just air cooled motors okay the rule of thumb 
plus or minus, but the rule of thumb is 100 watts per inch of voice coil. So that's what we're talking about is continuous watts. 100 watts continuous per inch. So two inch voice coil, about 200 watts. Three inch voice coil, about 300 watts. Four inch voice coil, about 400 watts. So when you see these big JBLs with all this, uh, the four inch voice coil and they're saying 1200 watts, yeah, that's not necessarily true. It's 1200 watts peak, it's about 400 watts continuous, okay? So that's how you rate them. It's as simple as that. The easiest way to tell is when you pick up the speaker, and you're actually looking at the speaker and you want to know what the wattage, the true wattage of that is. It's kind of hard, but underneath in the spider here, you can look at the bottom of the cone and sometimes you can measure, sometimes you have to guess to me. But if it looks like it's an inch and a half wide across there, that's going to be about 150 watts. If it looks like it's three inches wide, that's going to be about 300 watts and, and so on. So that's how to rate your wattage. I hope this information has helped you. We'll be back at a later date with uh, maybe something more informative or something else uh, that can tie in to help you understand a little bit of sound and, and setting your levels and different things like that. If there's something that you want to know about and I can help you, hey, message me and say, explain this or that to me. And if I can, I'll do a video on it. Okay? Y'all have a great day. This is the Speaker Medic. So long.